those days they would bury people within 24 hours. So this, this son, who is, we are told, her only son, has just died within the last day. And, and we are also told that she's a widow. So she has no uh, means of support for her life now. She would have been supported by her husband, but he died. And then she would have been supported by her son, her only son, but he died. And so she is left destitute. The, the prospect of total loss and destitution for her. She will live now on the, on the fringe of society, and she will be utterly dependent on the, on the charity of other people. Um, and she will have lost her whole standing in the, in the town. So she's wailing, and we're told that Jesus is moved by compassion at her grief. And she, he says, do not grieve. And he walks up to the funeral beer and he puts his hand just there on the, on the beer casket and says, young man, arise. And the young man rises up and he starts talking. And then Jesus gives the young man to his mother. Like last week, well, and to finish that, that what we heard, the people we are told, the disciples who are accompanying him, are filled with awe. They're just, they're afraid, they're just stunned at that kind of power that he can resuscitate uh, somebody like that. And they're filled with awe, and then they're filled with thanksgiving. And then they go and tell the people, and his fame spreads throughout all of the, the region. Like last week, there are sort of two points that, that we might grab hold of in this story. One is the lesser point, which is that Jesus can resuscitate dead people. And up to this point, of course, he hasn't done that. And we can imagine what this effect that had, this had on the disciples. They're terrified. Oh my God, this isn't just any old preacher and healer and teacher. This is the power of God to, to break the bonds of death, bring people back to life. So we learn that, but that's not really the point of the story. Because the point of the story is the compassion that Jesus feels for the widow. It's her deep grief that moves him. Her heart is broken, and Jesus knows that, and knows that she is now not only grieving the death of her son, but grieving the end of her own standing, her own life, in that community. And it's on her behalf that he acts. We don't know anything about the young man. He may have been a bum. But on behalf of the mom, Jesus acts and restores, not just the son, restores her to her whole life again. She can now live and have hope about her place in that community and about her future. It's that compassion that is the, the, the revelation and God and Jesus' ability to act out of that compassion to bring healing that is uh, so overwhelming in this story and which, which itself must have rattled the disciples, must have, must have sort of opened their minds to this, to this presence in a new way. And you know, it's this compassion and this ability to restore people 
that is the heart of this story. And it's the heart of the way God is in this world. Look back at your own griefs. Look at the, the brokenness in your life, whether it's, whether it's a death or whether it's a failing or a broken relationship or any of those things. In those moments of our brokenness, we pray for things that don't happen. We want our son to be resuscitated, and it doesn't happen. We want a relationship to, to be healed, and maybe it does, and maybe it doesn't. We want to have that job that we had, but we're fired from, and we don't get it back. There's no going back. We don't get the things that we think we might want. We don't get the story played out the way we want it. And we are grief-stricken. And it is just in that moment that Jesus acts, restores us to life again, because you have been restored, haven't you? I've been restored. You've been restored through all these griefs and brokenness and deaths that we've all been through, through them all, we have been restored. And that has been God's restoring power, the touch of Jesus, to be able to bring life again. Not the life we had, but life which is filled with living and with hope. And Jesus does it in mysterious ways. And he does it quietly. And sometimes it's out of the corner of our eye and sometimes we don't see it for a long time. Sometimes we are so struck by awe and fear, as the disciples were, that we can do nothing. But then, when we recognize it, when we see that restoring power that Jesus has poured into our lives, then we're able, like the disciples, to give thanks, to enter into, into, into joy again, and then to go and tell other people, this is the way the world is. This is Jesus alive in the world. This is how Jesus comes into your life. And that, is the good news. That's it. That Jesus has this relentless power to give us life. And he does. Most particularly at our broken moments. Most particularly when we need something. Christ acts to give us what we need.